Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 835. The topic today is make peace with your past so it doesn't trip up you, doesn't trip you, <laughs> it trips me up. Make peace with your past so you don't, tri- it doesn't trip you up in your future. That was meant to come back clean the first time. Apparently I'm a bit tongue tied today. It's okay, bear with me, it'll get easier. And this is a casual day because it's Saturday, by the way. Um, before I get into the topic, let me explain what this is all about and why you might be watching and might, this might be of interest to you. First of all, hi. My name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational speaker, occasionally articulate as well, and also a relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which forms my work. It's also what fueled my book when it first came out, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring... Excuse me. Book, which is 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a best-selling book on Amazon um, for men and women, couples, and singles. Recommend it highly. I'll put the link at the back end for you to pick it up yourself, because you'll love the book. Also being a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine is what informs my work with women, also what inspired these talks over almost three years ago, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today we're at episode number 835, because I've done a bunch of them, and I'll tell you at the back end where you find the replays. And just also so you know, this is a Facebook Live first, in case I start interacting with people you can't see if you're watching on YouTube, that's why. So, episode 835. Make peace with your past so it doesn't trip you up in your future. It came out right that time. Amazing. What I mean by this? Well, let me speak in the terms of relationships and dating because I am realizing as I say this, this paradigm applies beyond relationships. It applies to your life, basically. So it could be about where you live, sort of uh, success you have in your business, what sort of relationships you have at work, how much money you make. It applies to all sorts of areas. So any of those areas that affects you, listen up. So first of all, let me jump in with the idea and the principle that what happens in the past doesn't stay in the past. That may sound like a horror movie right there, I know. (laughs) However, the truth is that the past doesn't stay in the past. Meaning, and I don't mean like people come back to see you you saw 20 years ago, although although it does happen, you bump into friends you haven't seen for 20 years. Happened to me, so it does happen. But I'm speaking in the romantic context that past relationship stuff, as a technical term, by the way, meaning upsets, behaviors, limitations, challenges, etc., etc., including traumas and pain, etc., don't go away on their own. I did a talk a couple of weeks ago now about how time doesn't heal all wounds, time simply numbs them. That's a powerful talk, by the way. I recommend you watch that. If I remember, I'll put the link to that in the comments for this one so you can watch it because that was a, that was a big wake-up call for a lot of people. But when I speak to this context in a different framework, or that may end up being the same topic, we'll see, is how many people... I'm using it generically because I don't want to to point the finger at you or at me. But many people tend to think that the way they get over their bad dates is to go on more dates. So if the last three relationships don't work, let me go on a dating app and swipe and see somebody else to meet and see what happens. I'll, I'll drown my sorrows with a new date, new partner, a new sexual encounter. Sound familiar? I'm not, no, I'm not going to go there. Okay, just... <laughs> If you watch my broadcast, you, as, as some people have commented before, they've seen me have these like downloads that happen. And the reality is that when I get the download, it's actually a opportunity to choose directions. And oftentimes I follow it. But sometimes I get a download and they go, mm, not, for, not for this talk, not for this time. So that was one of those, in case you're wondering. And now I've forgotten what it was, which is good, because you wouldn't have to worry about it anyway. So, the, 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 there we go. The proliferation, the proliferation, I've got these technical words today articulating myself clearly is good of dating apps the abundance of dating apps that have shown up have made the opportunity to meet somebody new easier than ever hand I mean it's right in the palm of your hand or in your pocket or in your phone you have the opportunity to meet somebody new that fast but one swipe and connection away you go just because it's easier doesn't make it better well that's a slogan right there we think because we have such an abundance of choices on the dating apps and dating sites and et cetera, et cetera, even if you want to go the high end with matchmakers, et cetera, the number of people you can possibly meet is a large proportion of people. Not infinite, but certainly a large number of people. Keep dating and dating and dating different people, looking for the right one, has to an extent some validity. However, what gets in the way of that, what becomes a challenge with that, is that this um, 
methodology is <laughs> full of holes. Full of holes. It's like perforated by assumptions, to put it mildly. To go on the dating app to keep swiping and trying new dates all the time basically is a time filler if you don't do the work, if you don't deal with, you don't resolve your past stuff. What I'm saying is that you've got to make peace with your past selves that will trip you up in your future is because your past is influencing your daily life. Your past experiences, and again, I said this applies beyond relationships. It applies to business. It applies to family dynamics. It applies to every area of life because we tend to lean on or to sit back into our past experience to guide our future. That's normal it's what we because we learn from things and we then think we start practicing them. The the I keep saying the one that we use the word problem. We use another word. The opportunity with that is if you are leaning back onto your history, which most people are, you're also leaning back into the stuff that you've buried in your subconscious. Again, I talked earlier, again, the other talk about time buries all wounds. It does, sorry, time numbs all wounds. It doesn't heal them. This is the thing. It takes our experiences and then files them away in vaults somewhere that don't come to the conscious mind. They just go around in the background. And those vaults, so to speak, those filing cabinets of information, of experience, which we all have, because there's so much stuff stored in them, <laughs> you have, so do I, they, to get, they tend to get sublimated. They get, get um, not repressed, but they get, to, they get to get filed away in the dark storage, like in the, in, the, in the archives way back when, because consciously you want to focus on the immediate stuff. So you may be in an experience where you don't remember the last, well, more than five dates ago more than four people, five people ago. So you may go back, oh, well, it's going to be fine. I'll go back and swipe another date, swipe another app, excuse me, to get another date. You keep doing that, you're going to end up with a large accumulation of bad experiences most of the time. And if you don't make peace with your past, it will trip up your future. Meaning that if you don't go through those files once in a while and sort out what really is working for you and what isn't working for you, it's going to keep coming back to haunt you. And it's not Halloween yet, so I'm not going to be like ghosts. I mean, it's going to come back and remind you. It's going to trip you up. It's going to do the same thing again you've done before. And if your past dating experiences haven't been perfect, haven't been ideal, sorry to break the news to you, it doesn't mean they're going to go away. Until you face them, resolve them, make peace with them, they're going to keep repeating themselves in your future. I'm being pretty pedantic about this because especially when this is a Saturday broadcast, a lot of people are going to go on the first date tonight and just saw a friend do a Facebook Live about her own first date experience. I didn't get into it with her because I was watching in the replay, so I didn't see, interact with her live. I don't know how much of that is a past experience reminder or if it's just one time only. But the thing is, we think that when we go on dates, first dating apps, and we go and we go with people for one time only, we go to the next person, it will be totally different from the first person. Here's my homework for you, if you choose to accept. I did watch Mission, I did watch Mission Impossible uh, Fallout last night, so... That was in my mind. If you can do this, to look back at your past dates, plural, multiple partners, over the last five, six swipes or more, and step back without, in to, without interrogating too deeply and look at them and say, okay, how many of those have similar traits? Now, I don't mean you mean how they look or the gender or their accent. I mean behavioral the way they interacted with you, the way you experienced them, the way you felt about them, and especially the relationship ones, the ones that be, went beyond the first date, but into a relationship. If you look carefully enough, and without attachment, which is key, by the way, and you start to notice in the, like the, it's like looking with the peripheral vision, you're looking straight at the relationship, you're looking at the side of it and the outskirts of it and going, what's familiar about this relationship as it was with the ones before that? I can... I won't say I'll guarantee, but I would recommend. I recommend if you look at it close enough, you'll see there are some common threads, some common actions, and generally some common, less than ideal experiences that are repeated in several relationships. That's the piece you've got to make part. Sorry, that's the past you've got to make peace with. I'm going to transpose my bees, because it really comes down to you knowing for yourself what it is you really want, but also what's in the way of that, because you may know what you want. But every time you go on a dating app and you swipe and you meet somebody new, they don't quite fit that image you have. I can pretty much say, well, I can say, I am saying it right now, that your past is interacting, interfering, limiting, stopping, tripping you up in your future. So just dating more people with the dating apps isn't the solution. 
until you make peace with your past. And what I mean by that, as I said, is you have to see what the past is. You can't just make peace with it going, oh, it's all fine, I'm just going to ignore it. No, that's not making peace. That's suppression. Facing what happened before, seeing what is aligned, what doesn't work. Because it might have worked all the way through, but it's, most people it hasn't. We've had experiences that were less than ideal. So if you've got those experiences in the past that don't work for you, it's time to go face them, look at them, resolve them, move forward. I, in simple terms, you've got to be willing to forgive yourself and forgive the experience. Now, that's, that's the simplistic way I'm putting it. If you want to work with me, I'll tell you about how you can do it because it's a lot deeper than that. But the reminder, the encouragement, the invitation to you is to before you, is before you go on the next date, is to look back at your past and be honest with yourself. Did it work? Did it not work? Did it line up? Did it not line up? Did I have a repeat experience of what happened the one before that, the one before that, and the one before that? I'm keeping it fairly generic because I'm applying this to dating as well as relationships because more than often than not, it's the relationships over the last decade that you've had that have the common similarity beliefs. The dates might have some variance, but the truth is your next relationship will tend to mirror and repeat what happened in the past relationships unless you change something. It's basically to quote what is attributed to Albert Einstein, that doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different result, really is the definition of insanity. And if you are doing the same thing in your dating life and not changing anything, not, don't, I, don't, I don't just mean dating, changing dating apps, you're going to keep repeating the same thing again and again. And that is insane. If you want to change your dating course, the direct tra tra trajectory, not directory, the direct tra trajectory of your dating, well, I'm tongue-tying myself today, of your dating experience, then it's best to do something different to change the course here on the right course where you want to go versus the wrong course you've been going on all the time. I'll put a link in the comments so you can find out how to work with me and find out more information. I'll talk to you, give you some immediate guidance to get you started, but also recommend how we can work together. One of the traps, and I've said this before and again and again, one of the traps people fall into is they keep looking out there for love. I was, to, I was my friend's broadcast I saw earlier today. She shared that, that basically it's like she had to realize that she had to take care of herself and love herself first before she went to a relationship. And I highly encourage people to say yes to that and do that themselves too, which means practicing self-love, sorry, having a self-love practice. i transpose it around again. When you love yourself first, other relationships will blossom, will grow and be more abundant because you're sourcing yourself inside. It sounds simplistic, but it works. I know it does. I've proven it to myself. I've proven it to my clients and my teachers did too. So in the comments, I'll put a link for that as well. My self-love meditation is a guided meditation practice um, with audio tracks and a written guide that will help you get, you know, actually help you fall in love with yourself in a much more powerful way. Simple, elegant, effective. That, my book, and my discovery session are my three things I recommend because you'll have a transformation, transformation experience with all three of those, or, or any one of them. But my reminder as a bookend for this talk is that doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different result in your dating life, isn't going to work. It's going to repeat the same thing again and again. And stop being insane and change the paradigm. Change your framework, make peace to your past, so you can have a different future. Made sense? I hope it does. Um, I thank you for watching my broadcast. I appreciate that. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way, as I've said. I do seven days a week at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook which is Barry Selby on Facebook. My replays go onto my business page, which I appreciate you liking my business page, which is barryselby.author. Thank you for, what, for that, and they're also on that page. Um, and also I put them onto YouTube because it's always good to have another place to save them from YouTube, from Facebook, because you never know what happens. My Facebook channel is Barry Selby, which is youtube.com forward slash Barry, forward slash user, forward slash youtube.com forward slash user, forward slash Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and you watch the broadcasts on Messages from the Masculine, all of them listed from newest to oldest, and you get some help there. Um, on my social media is my name, by the way, Barry Selby. And again, the links are given verbally in case you don't have a chance to watch the comments. Um, discover a session with me or a complimentary chat is barryselby.com forward slash chat. The self-love practice that I'm talking about, the guided meditation is barryselby.com forward slash self-love, or one word. And thirdly, the book, my book that I mentioned is barryselby.com forward slash book easy enough. Check those links out. I'll again put links in the comments physically as well so you can click on them. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.